just thought I'd love to hear that sound. All of you relax. This is a matter of inconvenient timing. That's all. Police action was inevitable. And as it happens, it's necessary. So let them fumble about outside and stay calm. This is simply the beginning. I thought I told all of you I want radio silence until oh, further... I'm very sorry, Hans. I didn't get that message. Maybe you should have put it on a bulletin board. The wax Tony and Marco and his friend here, I figured you and Carl and Franco might be a little lonely, so I wanted to give you a call. How does he know so much about this? This is very kind of you. I assume you are our mysterious party crash. You are most troublesome for a security guard. <coughs> Sorry, Hans, wrong guess. Would you like to go for double jeopardy where the scores can really change? We get it. It's a fun debate. But Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. And sure, we know it's set on Christmas Eve, but that pretty much sums up the Christmas connection here. There's a big difference between a movie set during Christmas and a Christmas movie, right? This should be obvious, but as we said, it's a fun debate, so let's present our case. First, Die Hard is an action movie. In fact, it's one of the best and most influential action movies ever made. For years after its release, filmmakers would pitch studios on action movie concepts by explaining the film would be Die Hard in another setting. Die Hard was released at a time when action movies were already dominating the box office. But with the release of Die Hard in 1988, the film broke the mold. The action heroes of that time were guys like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone, who played these muscle-bound, almost superhuman characters. Bruce Willis didn't look like those guys, and he plays John McClane as an everyman cop. Sure, he has some skills, but he's not portrayed as some unstoppable badass. Faced with a seemingly impossible situation, McClane uses his wits and police training to disrupt the plans of the kidnappers. He engages in a cat-and-mouse game with them, managing to kill several of them and seize their weapons and radios. Now, before we dive deeper into the film, and why it works so well as an action movie, let's get past this uh, whole Christmas movie nonsense. As I noted at the top, the film takes place on Christmas Eve, which provides the necessary setting of an office tower that's completely empty, except for all the workers at the headquarters of the California branch of the Nakatomi Corporation, a Japanese company. It's a convenient excuse which gives us the hostage situation with the rest of the Nakatomi Plaza high-rise being empty, but that's pretty much the extent of the Christmas connection, apart from a few casual references throughout the film. It also doesn't make much sense. How many companies have their Christmas parties on Christmas Eve? The answer is pretty much none. The film is lacking in pretty much all of your traditional Christmas themes. We don't get any of the feel-good themes commonly associated with the holiday season, like the spirit of giving, love, and the magic of Christmas. Instead, we get huge doses of violence, conflict, explosions, and death. Finally, we know it's not a Christmas movie because the studio didn't think it was a Christmas movie. How do we know that? Because they didn't release it during the Christmas season. Die Hard was released on July 22, 1988. Just like any other action movie that the studio would hope would be a summer blockbuster. If you worked for the studio in 1988 and tried to market this as a Christmas movie, you would have been fired on the spot. Now let's get back to why this is such a great action movie, starting with the story and then the perfectly executed action sequences to Bruce Willis as John McClane and all the other great characters in this film, none of which have anything to do with Christmas. The film begins with NYPD detective John McClane arriving in Los Angeles to reconcile with his estranged wife, Holly Gennaro, who is attending a holiday party at the Nakatomi Plaza, where she works. While McLean is at the party, the building is taken over by a group of terrorists, or so-called terrorists, led by the suave and ruthless Hans Gruber, played by Alan Rickman. Rickman helps to make Hans Gruber one of the most iconic villains in movie history. McLean finds himself stuck in Nakatomi Plaza as he tries to take on Hans and his well-armed group of terrorists. McLean's efforts are supported by an outside contact, LAPD Sergeant Al Powell, with whom he communicates via walkie-talkie. 
Powell becomes McLean's link to the outside world and his moral support. Director John McTiernan deserves credit for the fantastic action scenes and the excellent pacing of the movie. There are plenty of over-the-top explosions and intense gunfights, but everything here seems more realistic than the other action movies of the period. Willis wasn't known as an action star when he was cast for the film, but anyone who saw him in Moonlighting opposite Sybil Shepard on network TV knew he had the charisma to be a leading man. He was perfect for the smart-ass character of McLean, and also proved he could carry an action movie. The film made him one of the biggest stars in Hollywood. But Die Hard had so much more than a perfectly cast leading man. As I mentioned, Alan Rickman was brilliant as Hans Gruber, the sophisticated and calculating mastermind of the criminal gang posing as radical terrorists, in order to steal $640 million in bearer bonds from the Nakatomi vault. Rickman is often hilarious as he brings an element of charm to the character while also being ruthless. His intellectual matchup against John McClane adds a psychological element to the story. Willis and Rickman set a very high standard with their performances, but the rest of the cast also delivers, which helps elevate the movie as an all-time classic. Bonnie Bedelia doesn't have a huge role as McClane's wife, but she nails all of her scenes. And Holly's relationship with McLean adds an emotional layer to the story, making the stakes personal for the protagonist. Reginald Vell Johnson is excellent as Sergeant Al Powell, the LAPD officer who becomes McLean's ally and confidant. His conversations with McLean help ground the film and helps to develop both characters. Vell Johnson parlayed this role into a long and successful acting career in film and on television. And then we have some of the funniest jerks in film history. Paul Gleason is excellent as Deputy Police Chief Dwayne T. Robinson, who manages to be wrong about everything as he refuses to support McLean and Powell. You'll remember Paul Gleason as the assistant principal in The Breakfast Club and Clarence Beeks in Trading Places. Basically, he's great at playing an asshole. William Atherton plays Richard Thornburg, an aggressive news reporter who will do anything to get a story, even broadcasting the identity of McLean's wife and information about their kids. Again, Atherton is perfectly cast to play this weasel. You'll remember him as Walter Peck in Ghostbusters. Similar character. And finally, we have Hart Bachner as Harry Ellis. Ellis has also become an iconic character. He's the clueless and smarmy Nakatomi executive who tries to negotiate with Gruber with disastrous results. Ellis is a caricature of the arrogant investment banker who thinks he can do anything when he's high on cocaine. And Hart Bachner just nails this role. Everything falls into place when you match a great script, an amazing cast, and a director who can bring it all together. In the end, Die Hard is notable for its intense action sequences, memorable one-liners, hippie Kaye, and a more vulnerable, funny, and relatable action hero. John McClane is a tough yet ordinary guy who finds himself in a crazy situation, which was a big departure from the typical action heroes of the time. And of course, none of this has anything to do with Christmas. <laughs>